I'm Cosmo Campbell, uh, creative director at DDB Canada. Uh, I don't like talking about myself very much. I kind of, in marketing speak, I guess, fit into the 35 to 50 year old demographic, watch 12 hours, 12.25 hours of television a week, uh, surf the internet, all that kind of usual stuff. I grew up in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, have been in the industry for uh, 20 something years, um, worked in the Middle East, in the UK, and then came to Van Vancouver and have been here for about 15 years. Uh, worked for DDB, which is a big multinational, um, headed out of New York uh, as part of the Omnicom group, uh, which has got a, a multiple ad agencies in that group and DDB is one of them. So. Um, I mean the biggest the biggest um, sort of reason for, for us to or to be attracted to somebody who's sort of standing out is as you pretty much as you put it is by doing something different and and to stand out. There are so many uh, freelancers from all sort of walks and fields whether it be photography or writers or art directors or even down into sort of specialist spheres of digital communication or um, even coding or whatever uh, is actually standing out and doing something different um, because you see a lot of different you see a lot of people and they all just tend to blend into into each other uh, now there's kind of good different and there's bad different and for us it's usually or for myself it's usually around what the ideas are that they're bringing it's not just being different for the sake of it or being crazy or doing something silly if it's really relevant to your field or to our field um, or the ideas that they're providing are really different. Um, I think everybody's, you know, in this industry, it's a, it's a creative industry and you're looking for fresh thinking, um, interesting creative solutions, um, ideas that you haven't seen before, reinterpretations that you haven't seen before. So those are the people that really stand out for us. It's the, uh, the smart thinkers, somebody who, who provides a different perspective on, uh, on problem solving. We're always looking for people who are good, who provide a different kind of edge. I guess the, the focus now is sort of switching more towards digital, more towards social media and to that, that space and, um, and the, the sort of leading edge of that space. Um, so, you know, people who have a, an understanding of the social media platforms and interesting ways of interpreting them or even sort of digital work and, you know, from that uh, would even be things around sort of advances in, in some of the programs as well or, you know, whether it's mm -hmm. Uh, uh, building stuff in Flash or HTML5 or you know whatever those programs are, people who are sort of specialists in that sphere. But still, uh, you know, it's it really goes back to again the the thinking and the ideas, and it, it, you know, back to some of the more traditional areas as well. It's it's the writers, it's the art directors, it's uh, pretty much everyone out there. We we try not to. Uh, focus too much in one area and say that's where the solutions are going to be it's more I think the the key for us moving forward is that it's still around the idea and who has the best ideas and it doesn't really matter which which field they're in if they're good thinkers they can be adapted over uh, so that's it but there's definitely you know a lot of people who are coming out of college or a lot of sort of the fresh thinkers are uh, more in tune with the digital space and where that's going. The difference for me that separates between you know people who want to be pitching themselves to to a larger agency versus a smaller one is that, in my opinion, I think the smaller agencies are probably looking for uh, people who are more of a generalist because uh, smaller agencies usually the people in there have to wear more hats. Mm -hmm. uh, they have clients where they, they have to have a, a broader skill set because you've got less people to be able to um, cross different sort of uh, platforms right. much e more easily. So you're probably looking for people with general skills who are well-rounded in 
uh, a number of different fields, but not necessarily uh, excelling to a huge degree in one particular area. In a larger agency, you have a broader group of people to, to draw from for that broad skill set. So what we tend to look for are, are specialists. We've got a lot of people who can do the broad thinking. Mm -hmm. um, it's more executional specialists, so somebody who's a really great thinker in one area. Uh, so those are the kind of people. I mean, I've never, I've never run my own shop. Uh, I've uh, been freelance and done the freelance thing. Um, l less out of choice than out of necessity or sort of the situation I found myself in. Um, there are different benefits for different people and there are some people who love the freelance world because it gives them the flexibility. Uh, that's a you know, major bonus of being freelance. For me, um, I'm not very good at the, at, again, to be a great freelancer you need to be more than just uh, able to do the work, you need to be able to um, uh, you know, contact with people and you need to do the bit of the hustle, you need to do all the billing and you need to do all your own sort of tax stuff and all of those kind of things. So it's a lot more than just doing the work. I'm not very good at that stuff and I don't really like doing that stuff. I like to concentrate on the work. The work is the sort of the fun side and when I call it the work I mean the ideas and, and um, coming up with solutions. That's the fun stuff for me. So I prefer to spend my time doing that than trying to drum up work. Um, uh, you know on the other hand here it's when you're working in an in a environment like this you're, you're um, you're mixing with a lot of really smart people at the same time and I enjoy that, being able to bounce ideas off people, being able to sort of feed off their creati creativity and give back as well. Where When you're in the freelance world, world you're uh, sometimes working in isolation, which mm -hmm. which some people really like, but for me, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's pros and cons for different people, but certainly for my personality type, I prefer to kind of be in an environment where uh, I can just concentrate on the ideas and you know mix with uh, other smart people so I guess the way I organize my life is a little bit of organized chaos I sort of sort of thrive on the on the chaos a little bit um, I mean you, you ask about work work life balance I guess I grew up in a grew up in a, a, a home where my father was retired when uh, pretty much from the day I was born and he was around all the time and it was a terrible thing. Um, I kind of wished that he had gone off to work and uh, been away from us for some time so uh, you know maybe that's part of the motivation for me or not motivation but it at least uh, is comforting when I'm not home is that I know that my kids are getting a break from me uh, but it's trying to find that balance and I, I guess again you know coming back to your question about being freelance being working in a in an agency um, you, you have a, a great support group here and I work with really smart people um, who allow me to do my job better and more effectively and uh, to get a work life balance. I mean, I'm not, uh, I don't have people working with me that I have to run after all day long and um, chase them all the time. Uh, so they allow me to sort of have a balance of, of sort of work life play. Uh, it is, some days it gets tricky, it sort of goes in those ebbs and flows and you know, sometimes you're working long hours and weekends and it never seems to stop and then it'll calm down for a while. So. Uh, but that's part of the the fun of this industry is it's a little bit of a roller coaster ride. You know, each week is is different. You're not doing the same thing over and over. 